This is the continuous distillation column. And we are separating methanol and ethanol. Here's how the column works. The feed tank is here, with methanol and ethanol. It is pumps down and up to feed tray number 10. Then it runs through the distillation column and the condenser is all the way up there with those coils. It refluxes up there and the distillate comes off the top back side of it over here and it runs eventually down into this tank down here. That's also where the bottoms product goes um, through a different tube over here. And down here at the bottoms is kind of an important area for you because, come over here, this uh, cylindrical glass vessel has the bottoms. Now, there's two marker lines here. And those are important because what you do is to measure the bottom's flow rate, you need to drain, turn up the pump that's over there that will drain the bottoms until it gets below, below the line. And then you'll stop the pump so that it just slowly fills up. And you time uh, the amount of time that it takes to get from the bottom mark to the top mark. And that will give you your uh, volumetric flow rate because you know the volume of the uh, cross section there. All right, so this pump down here is for the bottoms. Now, you can change the flow rate that it pumps at with this knob, and the knob actually goes over 100%. So you can keep turning it beyond 100. It goes to 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, and it can get going pretty fast. So you have to be sure to watch it if it's going fast so that no vapor from this cylinder comes into the pump, otherwise you could damage the equipment. So you got to have liquid in there at all times. So for this column, when we're measuring the distillate, we take a graduated cylinder, we take the distillate coming off of the top and time how long it takes to get to a certain level. Okay, so for the continuous distillation column, you don't want to change the reflux rate without consulting Mike and the other groups that are running the column at the same time as you, since it takes so long to get to steady state. So what you're want, gonna, going to want to do is uh, measure the temperatures and other things in the column to try and confirm that you've reached a steady state system, which will take a long time. Another thing is that even though in LabVIEW it reads off things like reboiler duty, you can't take that at face value. You will actually have to vary reboiler duty yourself because the duty that is put into the reboiler may not be the same that is actually put into the liquid. Alright, so don't worry about starting up or shutting down the column. Um, Mike will take care of that, so you don't need to worry about that. As far as taking your data points, um, a good time frame is probably about every 20 to 30 minutes take a new data point and you're not probably not going to reach steady state during the length of your experiment, um, but you can still take data points and get as good as you can of an estimate of what those steady state values, values would be.